Welcome aboard, Joe Hoper here, the Cloud Tech Guy. Today is December 13th, 2018. I sat for the Google Cloud Developer Exam, the beta version, and wanted to do a quick shout out with the top 10 things you need to know for this exam. Overall, the exam was actually very well written. Uh, I thought it was actually very well uh, structured as well. It flowed nicely. And it seemed like the content built on top of uh, itself uh, as you're going through the exam. There was one case study for the exam as well. But with that said, what I wanted to do was just do a quick little top 10. The first thing that you absolutely have to know for this exam is BigQuery. Yes, my friends, BigQuery, it is a requirement for this exam. You will not pass this exam if you don't know BigQuery. It had to have been well over 12 questions that had something about BigQuery uh, in it. Uh, BigQuery is a big topic for this exam. Now, what exactly do you want to know on BigQuery? Because again, it's a it's a big subject. Uh, BigQuery is a very powerful uh, analytical data warehouse. It has a strict hierarchy. You need to know everything from how to name in BigQuery. You need to understand object names. You need to understand other areas that I have listed here as well, like how to reduce latency in queries specifically. Know how you connect to the different services, such as Cloud PubSub, APIs, Cloud Endpoints, that is, Kubernetes, so on and so on. A lot around BigQuery in general. Uh, a lot of it was also, uh, when I talk about how to connect to services, was basically how do you essentially bring data in or ingest data. Now, one more thing before I forget to mention it was around not only connecting, but around performance. It is critical that you understand multi-tenancy, but also, for example, parallel execution. There is, at, I can remember at least two, if not three questions that discuss, for example, how you would execute um, parallel execution. For example, they didn't state it like that, but basically around reducing latency of a, um, a query, for example, what could you do to improve performance? Now, it's important to understand that the query engine, for example, is, of course, um, running in, in sort of a, a time slice uh, operation. And therefore, when you run a query, it performs typically a mix of I.O. and processing, waits for the I.O., uh, and then waits for the processor, again, when it's not idle, etc. There's a little bit more to it. I'd recommend you really dive into the docs and understand the fundamentals because they definitely wanted you to, uh, to definitely clearly understand uh, some of the underlying best practices for... Um, increasing performance. Now, as part of that was also uh, knowing at least two BQ commands. Do you understand um, what BQ commands are and some of the ones you might want to run, for example, to, uh, to run a query? All right, let's see. Number two, as far as um, access around BigQuery, again, I've got two sections just on BigQuery because there's just so much around it. Uh, data sets. So know what a data set is, for example, but also, uh, and, and again, if you don't know what it is, it's a collection of tables, very basic. And once again, um, they just want you to make sure that you understand uh, that you know the controls that can be put in place around BigQuery and services that support BigQuery uh, as well. Therefore, you need to know how to use ACLs, need to set up a service account and also um, know the roles uh, in BigQuery uh, as well. Uh, once again, if you don't know the roles, then go to the console and make sure that you understand the different roles in BigQuery. For example, I'll give you some clues. You may want to go to the document 
uh, page for access control, spend some time reviewing that because you'll see the roles asked about or in the answers of the questions. You do need to know, for example, the difference between data viewer and metadata viewer, data editor, and data owner. For example, one of the, and again, I can't give you exactly what they ask. I don't think GCP would appreciate that, but I would recommend that you know, for example, who can modify or delete tables, for example, or who can go ahead in and get table data. Uh, so once again, there's a lot more to that, but just make sure that you know the predefined roles for BigQuery. That is going to be critical uh, for you uh, on this exam. Okay. Number three, I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Make sure that uh, you have a good background in Kube Engine. Uh, know some of the command lines like Kube CTL and gcloud CLI commands to be able to start and stop, bring up clusters, add um, to the cluster. But also, to know what the error codes are for Kubernetes, such as 400 and 403. Uh, and to go with Kube, I, I would also recommend you understand how to deploy Kubernetes in a CI pipeline and understand, for example, uh, the different complementary services like a Container Engine uh, or Cloud Build that can work along with Kube Engine to be part of a pipeline. Number four, Cloud SQL. Now, Cloud SQL... Uh, was surprisingly heavily tested as well. Uh, for me, this is one of my favorite services. So I think I did pretty well in that area. I thought it was pretty straightforward and very easy to master if you just understand the basics of Cloud SQL. Um, the only really, I would say, technically adept area you may have some challenges with if you're not a, a programmer, uh, then you know, again, that may or may not be true. I'm just giving you my insight. Uh, could be how to, for example, um, kick off Cloud SQL and have it scale between different regions, for example. What's the most effective way? Now, one of the things on the exam that I thought was sort of um, interesting was there's a lot of Cloud SQL, and I'll get to Cloud Spanner coming up as well. I think that's on the next page. You definitely want to know the use case between Cloud SQL and Cloud Spanner. Now, with Cloud SQL, you need to know the roles. Once again, Cloud SQL Editor, SQL Admin, uh, Client. Again, know those roles. Another thing, too, know how to connect via the console, uh, via the Connections tab, and also know the CLI to be able to do that as well. Uh, also know that you connect with SSL or without SSL as well. Once again, Cloud SQL was fairly heavily tested. Uh, again, you should already know if you're taking this exam that it does support uh, two approaches to SQL, right? Again, make sure you know MySQL and Postgres SQL, et cetera. Also, I didn't put it on the list, uh, was how to migrate data from one site, uh, from, from, for example, your customer site. Uh, and I actually think, now think about it, it was actually in the case study and basically, they're asking, how would the customer migrate data from on-prem to Cloud SQL? What would be the best approach? Once again, how do you migrate SQL to SQL? What would be the best approach, best practices involved? Number five, know your use cases for the data services, how to connect to those services. This exam was very big on connecting to services from other services. Once again, you need to know endpoints. You need to know um, Cloud PubSub, App Engine, Kubernetes, data flow, and cloud endpoints. Number six, Cloud Spanner. Once again, I mentioned earlier, lots of questions on Cloud Spanner. I want to say at least six or seven questions or so. Uh, at least seven, probably even eight. I don't didn't count exactly in, in my head. They didn't let me take notes with me. So uh, with that said, uh, a lot on Cloud Spanner. I think the main areas to focus on was, again, the use case, but how to scale it, but also minimize costs. 
Note that there's two important connection decisions you have to make. That is the configuration and the node count. Lastly, one more thing to add to Cloud Spanner was there was at least uh, one question around the case study. I would recommend before you, and this is true with Cloud SQL, recommend you take a look at the case study that's on the website uh, and try to figure out what you would do before you take the exam to migrate SQL from point A to point B. Again, they're going to ask you a service and how would you migrate on-prem to, um, to, uh, to either one of these services, but also to, um, they always throw in there, for example, uh, how do you minimize cost or how do you get better performance? Uh, also too, with cloud a SQL, uh, memcache, know what memcache, why would you want to use it? And again, with Cloud Spanner, how do you increase the performance, but also maintain the cost? Number seven, I am permission basics. Uh, this exam, a lot on security. Service accounts are pretty heavily tested. Uh, know how to set up audit logs. Know the best practices for logging. Uh, know the use case for Stackdriver logging, logging as well. I'm going to talk about that here in a second. Also, too, how do you customize permissions for hybrid cloud access? Huh? Well, that's a new one, right? Okay. Number eight. A lot of questions on. And again, I, I want to say 10 questions. And remember, this is a beta exam out of 100. Uh, 102 questions, that is, on the exam. Uh, a lot there. Uh, I was sort of surprised by the amount that they asked on Stackdriver. But the questions were actually really good because they were really focusing on what developers probably should need to know. It wasn't so much around monitoring. A lot of it was focused on debug and trace. If you have not played around with stack driver, debug, trace, or profiling, I would recommend you get over to Quick Labs. And play around with it if you if you haven't had time, or get a demo account uh, or a free trial, whatever you know. Again, where you're located and what's available, I I don't know what's available in every country, but uh, what I would recommend is find a way to practice. They're going to test your knowledge heavily on Stack Driver, Debug, and Trace. Again, a lot of it is going to come down to how to identify problems. This is definitely a problem-solving exam overall. Lastly, how do you initialize and validate APIs for Stackdriver with other applications? Okay, number nine. Another area that... Uh, that definitely was developer focused was what exactly cloud build is, why you want to use it. Uh, if you're going to deploy a CI pipeline in Google Cloud, this is probably the tool you're going to want to use. Know your build steps. If you don't know your build steps, go to the cloud build doc site and memorize them. You will see them at least a couple times. Know that there's automatic and manual uh, processes that you could use to kick off cloud build. You want to be able to understand how to integrate this with cloud repositories. Once again, uh, around uh, the build steps, also, uh, what exactly is the process for custom builds? Remember that there's your templated solutions, but also custom if you want as well. Memorize the steps for that. There is definitely a focus again uh, on performance and how do you speed up the build process. Number 10, no deployment manager templates. Again, know what YAML is, know, know how to debug as well. Python scripts, there's definitely some questions on uh, debugging scripts and trying to figure out why this basically this program or script is not kicking off or why this script may not be copying a, or creating a snapshot, for example. So definitely understand. Um, again, if you're a developer, these things are fairly straightforward. If you don't know what deployment manager is, 
I would recommend you go to the overview page, understand the formats it supports, understand how to deploy a template. Those are the main things. Python scripts, again, if you if you don't know Python, you're going to have a little challenge on the exam. I wouldn't say that if you don't know programming, you would totally um, fail if you know how all the services are going to you know fall into play. This was the beta exam, so I don't know how the final exam will turn out uh, in 2019, but we shall see. Lastly, no error codes again uh, for you know error uh, you know syntaxes I should say. Uh, I really probably should have put error uh, results or codes for syntax issues. Definitely, again, that's more Python uh, related. Now. As far as learning more about Google, I do have, uh, again, uh, nothing developed yet for Cloud Developer. This is, again, a new exam. I'm working on it. Uh, expect something at least on Udemy by uh, the first or second week of January for the production. It'll be ready for the production exam. With that said, in the meantime, we do have classes on Pearson Safari as well as Udemy and several other uh, platforms, different types of courses. Again, just to give you an idea, feel free to get online to those platforms and take a look. Now, do you expect uh, some courses on Udemy? And then I'm working on contracts for other platforms. That may not occur until February or March. Uh, again, some of the other platforms work a lot slower than uh, what I could do on Udemy. With that said, I'm going to wish you the best of luck on the exam. If you get any feedback, reach out to me uh, on uh, LinkedIn or YouTube. Thanks again for joining, and I, I definitely want to see you succeed. Take care.